In the early days of the 20th century, many a Saturday afternoon was spent in an old theater, where a nickel, a box of popcorn, and the flicker on the screen would let millions of kids just drift away. They were the golden days of the movies. Where the Wild West met the silver screen. And it all began right here, where nature did what set designers could only dream about. At Movie Road, take a right turn, head north, and as you slip off the asphalt into the dirt, you're rolling onto history. Fire! For a hundred years, this is where Hollywood came and where the American Western was born. Over 400 movies have been shot here. On these roads and among these rocks, it's been a steady stream of legends. John Wayne. Roy Rogers. Gary Cooper. Randolph Scott. Gene Autry. Fatty Arbuckle. Gregory Peck. All sorts of films have been shot here, but right from the start, it was obvious. These hills were the perfect backdrop to tell the story of the West. Through these rocks and canyons raced Roy Rogers and Trigger. Now you can make the same journey. Here on the back side of the Sierra Nevada. Below Mount Whitney. is a remarkable place. They're just breathtaking. One of the most unique geological formations in the world. There's something almost spiritual about them. You get out there and it's, it's just overwhelming, the beauty of the places. We can talk about the Roy Rogers and Gene Autry's and John Wayne, but the landscape is as important as they are. These piles of rock, a seemingly haphazard work of nature, are called the Alabama Hills. The Alabama Hills are almost a character in the movie. It's just not about the landscape and location. They actually were part of the film. Remarkable to see large truck-sized rocks balanced on top of other truck-sized rocks. You won't believe how big they are. They're gigantic. And this is what attracted so many of the producers. The Eastern Sierra is one discovery after another for film buffs and geologists who are constantly asked about the rocks. If you look up in the Sierras, you'll notice that it's a lot of jagged rocks up there, and that's just because the glaciers came through and just radically carved everything. Whereas uh, Alabama Hills that we have here, the process mainly shaping these rocks is called exfoliation. As they were uplifted and exposed to the surface, all that overriding pressure was released, and so the rocks were able to kind of expand a little bit. Think about when you're making bread and you let your yeast rise a little bit, and so as it's doing that, the edges of the rocks start to peel off in an onion shape. Where did the name Alabama Hills come from? Well, chalk it up to the Civil War and the Union sinking of the Confederate boat Alabama. So as the story goes, a group of Easterners came this way, so they named the mountains after the ship Alabama. In 1920, Hollywood took notice. Clarence Badger, silent film director, he would come up here socially. He had actresses and actors that would come up. And once they got here and they saw the landscape, uh, what about making a movie up there? Your first movie is 1920, The Roundup. And things just took off from there. Hollywood invaded the hills, picking up and moving to Lone Pine, bringing the cameras with microphones, giant towers, and special trucks to follow all the action. Oh, Susanna, oh, don't you cry for me. 
I'm from, from Alabama, we the banjo on my knee. They even found a local businessman, Russ Spainauer, to provide the horses and other support. Spainauer was a rancher with cattle and horses. They didn't want to necessarily bring all their horses and all that, so Spainauer became the go-to guy for whatever they needed, even getting extras. The Eastern Sierra opened up a whole new world for filmmakers, and they literally had to reinvent an industry on the spot. Some of the early filmmaking techniques that were used here, I mean, they were the pioneers of filmmaking. And it wasn't long before the fans of these epic westerns started asking, where are these mountains? Film buff, watching western films, would bring their own individual stills off of a television, bring them up here and look to try to find that same location. Where is it that Randolph Scott was laying on the ground and his head on a rock? Because I want to put my head on that rock. They kept coming to wander through the rocks. And in 1990, the community created a film festival to celebrate a special bond with Hollywood. That first year, Roy Rogers got things going, and they've never looked back. The Lone Pine Film Festival has something no other festival in the world has, this wonderful backyard. We're the only film festival where you can go and see a film and then take a tour to the actual locations where that film was shot, which is very exciting. Right from the start, everyone came for the stars and the rocks. The tour guides have pictures so that you can look and see what scene was shot there. And you can actually go and pose in the same position that the actors were in. I mean, you're walking in the footprints of the stars. This is Lone Ranger Canyon. John Wayne shot a couple of number of movies over here. We're at the Gunga Dune site where they're crossing the bridge with the elephant. And uh, what we're looking at is where the bridge was built between two rocks. In the movie, it looks like a thousands of foot of a chasm below. It's really about eight feet. And this is one of the support for building the bridge. It's rare that you see elements of some of this stuff today. In the early days of the film festival, the old stars would show up, like Gregory Peck, who filmed Yellow Sky here. And sitting around socially and you're talking to, to Gregory Peck is, is an experience you, you just never forget. Soon, plans were hatched for a museum, a massive fundraising effort organized to buy the land. And Jim Rogers, a Las Vegas businessman, made an outrageous offer. Jim was a passionate film buff, came to our festival, thoroughly enjoyed it, and uh, graciously said, if uh, you all can make that land purchase happen, I will build the museum. So the Museum of Western Film History was born. Robert Sigmund was the museum director, and before that, CEO of Republic Pictures, the studio that produced many films in Lone Pine, and says people never get tired of the Lone Pine story. And they come in and their first expression is, wow. Folks pour in every day to see John Wayne's shirt, Humphrey Bogart's car, the wagon from Django Unchained, old cameras, historic movie posters, and the exotic equipment that they use to make the old westerns. The younger generation finds out that these movies were made and want to know more about it. The experience takes Mark Jones right back to the days of his childhood. Randolph Scott was my grandfather's favorite actor. And back in the 50s, I remember him taking us to the movie Ride the High Country. The Westerns really drove home the hero mentality and a sense of right versus wrong. You find the history everywhere in Lone Pine. The Dow Hotel is turning 100 years old. It was built to house the stars and film crews that came here year after year. The walls are plastered with photos and artwork that celebrate the old days. Here, you can even stay in John Wayne or Roy Rogers' old room. Back in the museum, old timers constantly have childhood flashbacks. When you have someone in their 60s, 70s, who's got their grandchild with them, and they walk through Lone Ranger, Hoppy, Gene Autry, Roy Rogers, most dramatic memory situation, Hopalong Cassidy. It is not unusual to have a 70-year-old looking through the exhibit case, and he sees a plate, a cup, a cereal box, a mug, and he pauses, and he says to his grandson, my mom and dad gave me that knife when I was eight years old. And you can almost see him going back and re-experiencing that. Larger than life characters. Images of the dust and the magic of the Old West. 
mean, we talk about American legacy. The period of the cowboy, the last 20 years of the 19th century, was a time of adventure, just a great time in American history. The West, the action, the adventure. And out here, among the rocks, it's just so easy to drift back a hundred years, dreaming about that adventure and rooting on the heroes.